Welcome back, my fellow programmers. Today on the program, we are going to cover 4.5 informal code analysis. What's that mean? I don't know. Let's start the program and find out. We have one topic to cover, informal code analysis, our learning objective, compute statement execution counts, and informal runtime comparison of iterative statements. Now imagine for a moment it is your birthday and I tell you that I have a bag of money for you, but I'm going to lock that bag of money into a safe and the four digit code to that safe is in your birthday card. So you open up your birthday card and you find this question. How many times will these loops iterate? And by determining how many times these two loops iterate, you will get a four digit code that opens the safe. Look at those two loops, see if you can determine how many times each of them iterate, see if you can get that four digit combination to open up the safe and get that bag. The first loop being the I loop, it's starting at zero. We are looping while I is less than 34 and we are counting up by one every time. So that means we are counting from zero up to 33. 33 will be the last value of I. Zero through 33, that's 34 different iterations. Looking at the J loop, the J loop starts at zero and loops while J is less than or equal to 72, and we are counting up by one. So what are the last two digits in the combination? It's 70, 73. We are starting at zero. We are going up to and including 72. That's 73 different iterations. The combination, you punch in three, four, seven, three, and the safe opens up and the bag tips over. And really there was no money in the bag. It was just leftover pogs and slap bracelets that I had from the 80s. I don't know, I'm trying to make this informal code analysis relevant. When we are doing our informal code analysis, we need to look at the three parts of our for statement. We need to look at the iterator. What is our iterator starting off at? Our conditional, what do we go up to? And then our update statement, how do we increment every single time? When we have loops, counting up from zero or one on the top left we are declaring an integer named count and we are setting it equal to zero we have a for statement every time that for statement iterates that count goes up by one when we're done count should tell us how many times that have that has iterated take a look at that loop and take your best guess for the number of iterations we start at zero we go up to, but we don't include 34, and we're going up by one every time. So zero up to 34, that's 34 different iterations. Zero through 33 is 34 iterations. Moving directly below that, we are initializing i to zero. We are looping while i is less than or equal to 34, and we're counting up by one every time. How many iterations? Well, zero to through 34 inclusive would be 35 iterations. One through 34 is 34, but we also have to count zero. That's 35 iterations. Moving up to the top right, we are initializing I to one. We are looping while I is less than 34 and we are counting up by one every time. So that's one through the last number we will count is 33. One through 33 is 33 iterations. And on the bottom right, directly underneath that, we are initializing i to one. We are looping while i is less than or equal to 34. That's one through 34 inclusive. That's 34 iterations. When our loop starts from zero or one, it's pretty easy to calculate how many iterations we do, especially when we count up by one. Here we're going to take a look at some loops not starting at zero or one. This time we have, we are initializing i to five. We are looping while we're less than 12 and we're going up by one. So this is five inclusive up to 12 not inclusive. 
that's seven iterations. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. That's seven iterations. So when the first number is included and the last number is not included, that's just going to be the difference between the end and the start of the loop. We can just take that 12, we can subtract five from it, and we get our seven iterations. Directly below that, we are initializing i to five. We are looping while we are less than or equal to 12 this time and counting up by one. So that's five through 12 inclusive, that's eight iterations. So we will loop when i is five, when i is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. That's eight iterations. When both of the numbers are included, it is going to be one more than the difference between the end and the start of the loop. So 12 minus five gives us the seven, but now we are including the last number, so we need to add one more. That's where we get the eight. It gets trickier if the loop doesn't count up by one every time. On the top left, we have an example where we do increment by one. So we have starting at zero inclusive, going up to 34, not inclusive, counting up by one. That's 34 iterations. Zero through 33 would be 34 iterations. Directly below that, we are again are starting i at zero. We again are looping while i is less than 34, but this time we are incrementing i by two every time. This case, it's only going to be 17 iterations. We're looping while i is zero, while i is two, four, all the way up. The last one that we do is when i is 32. If we count all those up, that's 17 iterations. On the top right, we're counting up by three this time. When we count up by three, that's going to be 12 iterations. We'll count when i is zero, when i is three, when i is six, nine, 12, 15, all the way up to 33 would be the last one we do. That's 12 iterations. And on the final one, we are counting up by fours. And this is going to be nine iterations. We'll loop when i is 0, 4, 8, 12, 16. The last time we will loop is when i is 32. That's nine different iterations. So it makes it a little bit more confusing when, we, when our loop incrementer is not just one. Counting down is sort of similar. We are starting our loop at 15. We are looping while we are greater than 0, and we are counting down by 1. That's 15 is included. The zero is not included. That's 15 iterations. That's just 15 minus zero. The one directly below that, we're starting at 15. We're looping while i is greater than or equal to zero. That's 15 and zero both included. That's 16 iterations. Same thing as if we were just counting up as if it were the opposite. On the top right is where it gets trickier. This is where we are counting down by two every time. So this will be eight iterations. We'll loop when i is 15, 13, 11, all the way down. The last time we will loop is when i is one. And our last example for counting down is when we are counting down by threes. This loop will loop five times. It'll loop when i is 15, 12, 9, 6, and 3 would be the last time it looped. So that would be five iterations. We can get even zanier if we want. We can update our counter variable inside of our loop. So the loop will increment i by 1 every single time, but every time this iterates, we are also changing the value of i. That makes it a lot trickier to determine how many times this loop will iterate. Starting with i of zero, our looping condition is zero less than 10. We do get inside the loop, which means we add one to the count. That's one time that it iterated. But inside the loop, we are gonna mess with the iterator variable. We're gonna times it by two. Well, zero times two is still zero. And then when we get to the end of the loop, the loop update happens and i becomes one. That was the first loop through. Our second loop through, i is one, one is less than 10. We're gonna add one to the count inside of the loop. So our count becomes two. Now inside of the loop, we are going to multiply that i times two. And since i was already one, one times two is two. 
we get to the end of the loop, the loop incrementer kicks in, and that bumps it up to three. We're back at the top of the loop. I is three. We're asking if three is less than 10. We do get inside the loop, so we do count that we got inside the loop one more time. Inside the loop, we're going to take I and multiply it by two. Well, I is currently three. Three times two, that pushes it up to six. At the end of the loop, I++ plus plus kicks in and changes it to seven. So now I is seven. We're asking if seven is less than 10. It is. We get inside the loop. We add one to the count to count it. That's four. Then the second line in the loop, we're going to multiply I by two. I is currently seven. Seven times two is 14. At the end of the loop, the loop incrementer kicks in and pushes it up to 15. And then when I is 15, we're going to ask if 15 is less than 10. It is not. And so this loop executed four times. Messing with your loop, messing with your incrementer variable inside the loop can have a drastic effect on how many times that loop executes. Besides for changing the incrementer variable inside the loop, we can change the looping condition as well. And so then your looping condition will change every single time. And again, we just need to trace this out every single execution of the loop. So when i is zero, we're asking if zero is less than x. x is five at this point. We're asking if zero is less than five. That's true. We go inside and we count it. The count becomes one, but then we subtract one from x. x now becomes four. And then at the end of the loop, i increments to one. We're back at the top of the loop to see if we can get in a second time. I is one, we only added one to I. We didn't mess with I inside the loop. I just incremented because of the loop incrementer. And now we're asking if I is less than four. We're not asking if it's less than five because we changed X. Well, I is still less than X. One is still less than four. We're gonna go inside and count it. X is going to move down to a three. At the end of the loop, I is gonna move up to a two. To see if we can get in a third time, i is two. We're asking if two is less than x. x is currently three, so we're asking if two is less than three. That's true. We go inside, we count it. x moves down again to a two. At the end of the loop, i moves up to three. We go back up to the top of the loop to see if we can get in a third time. This time when i is three, we're asking if three is less than X, X is currently two, we're asking if three is less than two. That is not true anymore. That is the first time this loop evaluates to false. We don't get back inside and we are done with the loop. This loop executed three times. So sometimes just tracing it out and counting it and seeing a pattern and seeing what is happening is going to be the best thing to help you figure out how many times these loops execute. We're not just dealing with regular loops, we're also going to be dealing with nested loops. With a nested loop, you need to figure out how many times two loops iterate, the outer loop and the inner loop. And to figure out how many total iterations, it's always the outer loop iterations times the inner loop iteration. So in this case, the outer loop, the I loop, that will loop five times from zero to four inclusive. And then the inner loop will loop two times from zero to one inclusive. So the outer five times the inner two, that gives us 10 iterations. That's gonna bring us to the end of this lesson. Make sure you rate how you are feeling about that learning objective. Read over your recap statement. Hit me up with any questions or concerns that you have regarding these concepts. Join us in our next video and keep programming.